Hello and welcome to our second rhythm video. Okay, so uh, today we're going to be working in um, a three time rather than four time. So if we were going to see a three time um, time signature, the one that most of you would come across in your sort of grade one and two, and if we're working grade uh, one theory, then we would see a time signature like this, okay? Um, now, what that means is that we have three beats in each bar, and the beats that we are counting in are tars. So this four is a code number for a tar. And I said last week it would be much more simple if time signatures were written this way, but they're not, so we have to remember our code numbers, okay? So we're in three, four time. Now, um, in oral, um, especially in examinations, you're asked to clap along with a piece of music in time and decide whether you think it's in two time or three time or four time. Now, three time music tends to have a very distinctive sway to it. So um, often, um, if you've done musicianship with me, we have a boom, chick, chick, boom, chick, chick. And I want you to feel it in your knees. Um, and we, we sort of, we, I mean, slap your knees, at the moment, I'm doing it a little bit higher so you can see, so we slap our knees, and then we do two lighter beats. So it tends to have a very strong beat on the first beat of the bar, so it would be one, two, three, one, two, three, as if you're doing a waltz, and you might sway to a one, two, three, a one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. So if you can fit that pattern, boom, chick, chick, boom, chick, chick, boom, chick, chick, into any of the pieces of music that you're hearing around the house at the moment. Um, if you put um, the radio on, lots of pop songs tend to be in four time. Uh, but if you're listening to Radio 3 or Classic FM, you might hear um, some other music that has this this um, feel to it. So it's, it's just working out whether that, boom, chick, chick, boom, chick, chick, feels comfortable with the piece of music and then it's a probably a three time piece of music. Okay, so we can still play our game, don't clap it back, um, but you might notice there's a difference. Instead of don't clap this one back, the rhythm that you are listening for this time is don't clap it back. Okay, so it goes ta, ti, ti, ta. Crotchet, quaver, quaver, crotchet, crotchet, quaver, quaver, crotchet. Okay, so I'm going to put on the metronome. Let's go a little bit faster. Boom, chick, chick, boom, chick, chick, and you're listening for. Okay, and if you hear that one, when I offer, leave a little space for you to clap back to me, I want you to put up your hands and say, don't clap it back, okay? So, let's do two bars in just to get going. I'm gonna clap your rhythm and I'd like you to clap it back to me. So, boom, chick, chick, off I go. Did you clap it back? It's a bit more tricky, that one. Remember, you're listening for don't clap it back. Ta, ti, ti, ta. Okay, let's get into the feel a bit. Boom, chick, chick, boom, chick, chick, boom, chick, chick, off I go. did you do? Yeah? Got it? All right, we'll have another go at that another day. Right, um, so it is um, rhythmic dictation time. Now, I had some paper. Okay, so with our dictation, last time we had a piece of paper. If you don't have one, stop the video, go and get one. Okay, you're going to need um, paper, pen and scissors. Paper, pen and scissors. Um, 
if you want a grown up to help you with the scissors, go and grab a grown up as well. Okay, so if you're back, we've got our paper. So remember last time we folded it in half lengthways, so it looks like that. We folded it in half again, so it looks like that. And we folded it in half again, so it looks like that. And we open it out and you get four beat boxes. Okay, now we don't need four bead boxes this time. So what I'd like you to do is with a pair of scissors, should have had here's one I made earlier, snip off the end. And then you end up with a three beat pattern. Okay, which so you can put each of your rhythm symbols into those three boxes. Next time round, those three boxes. Next time round, turn your paper over those three boxes and then those three boxes. Not sure whether I'm doing it the right way. I'm really confused with the flipping thing. I watch everything backwards when I'm doing these videos. So if I go the wrong way, just bear with me. Okay, so um, last time I'm aware, I didn't sort of draw in, I drew it up here, but I didn't draw it on here, what it should look like. So I'll do that this time, um, just to help you make sure you've got it right. So remember, we had a little method for when you're doing dictation. Dictation is when you hear um, some music played or clapped, and then you try and notate it down. So it might be that you're notating pictures here. At the moment, we're just notating um, uh, rhythms. Okay, so the recipe of rhythms you are going to have to choose from is the same as before, ta, ti, ti, and a tu, wu. Okay. And remember the two woos go across two beat spaces. So we just leave that one blank. Okay. If it was a rest, there would be a rest symbol in there. The fact that it's blank means that this one lasts two beats. If you want to just show that so that you really, so you don't get confused, you can add a line. All right. So remember, I'm gonna clap each one three times and there's a little method that you can use um, to help you with dictation. So the first time you hear it, um, I want you to take a little mental picture of the rhythm that I've just done. So open your brain, listen to it as a whole and take a little picture. Then the second time you hear it, I want you to compare the picture that you've taken to what you're hearing and then have a go at writing it down. And then the third time you hear it, I want you to look at what you've written down, maybe trace it along with your finger, um, and check that you're hearing what you've written down. And then if you need to do any corrections, you can, okay? Um, sometimes when we're given dictation things, we spend the first one panicking, the second one panicking even more, and then the third one just scribbling down whatever comes to mind. Okay, so don't do that. Right, let's do... Let's have our, okay, so here is your first rhythm um, and I'm going to do boom, chick, chick, off I go and then I'm going to give you your rhythm, okay, are you ready? Just to get us in this 3-4 flow, okay, are you ready? Boom, chick, chick, off I go. Take a little picture. Next one. So it's num rhythm number one again. Boom, chick, chick, off I go. So write it down. One more go. Check to see whether you wrote is what I clapped. One. Boom, chick, chick, off I go. Okay, so that's rhythm number one. We started simple. So remember, tars are one line, tts are a little bridge, and two woos are minims. So this one was ta, ta, ta. Ta, ta, ta. And on your piece of paper, it should look something like that. Okay. Number two. And that boom, chit chit, off I go. 
and then I'll give you the rhythm. Boom, chick, chick, off I go. Take a little picture in your head. This time, try and write it down. Boom, chick, chick, off I go. Okay, now we're going to check what you've written is correct, okay? Boom, chick, chick, off I go. So the rhythm that I did was off I go, ta, ti, ti, ta, right? So on your piece of paper, it should look something like this bottom one, ta, ti, ti, ta, and on my rhythm board, ta, ti, ti, ta. And remember we put the stronger beat at the start um, of the bar, ta ti ti ta, ta ti ti ta. Okay, right. Next one. Uh, let's put this on. Boom, chick, chick, off I go. Okay, we ready? Here it is again. Pair your picture in your head and then try and write it down. Boom, chick, chick, off I go. Okay, I've got writing it down. Okay, now this time I want you to follow what you've written down with your finger while I'm clapping and see if the sounds match what you've written. Boom, chick, chick, off. I go. Okay, so hopefully you can make any corrections if you need to. And the rhythm that I clapped was ta ti 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 ti. So on my board it's going to look ta ti 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 ti. Go. And on my sheet, I'm going to turn my sheet over and it's going to look something like this. Ta, ti, 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 ti. And the last one coming up. Okay, introduction. Boom, chick, chick, off I go. Take a little picture. Okay, you ready? Introduction again. Boom, chick, chick, off I go. So you should be writing it down now. Okay, and the last time, this is comparing what you've written down with what you hear coming up. Boom, chick, chick, off I go. So the rhythm that I clapped was off I go. Two, woo, ta. On my rhythm board, it looks like this. Two, woo, I'll see if I can do that better. Draw the circle, add the stick. Make sure yours don't look like lollipops. Make sure that the stick comes at the side. If it's going up, it looks like a duh. If you want to write it going down, you're perfectly welcome to. It looks like a puh. We dip our notes. Circle, line. Okay, so two, woo, ta. All right, and if you want to draw a line through the bar just to remind yourself that the sound continues all the way through um, the second beat, then you can. All right, so um, what we're going to do now is we're going to have a little clapping game where we're going to um, go through um, 
this uh, these four patterns I'm going to do each one four times so we're going to have a 16 bar um, uh, sort of piece um, and I'm going to give you uh, the same introduction boom chick chick off I go and then we're going to come in um, I'm going to go through four lots of one, four lots of two, four lots of three, four lots of four. What I'd like you to do is to um, pick a different order. So decide which one you're going to start with. You might want to start with three. And then as we're coming up to four bars worth of that, you might go to one. Then you might go to two. Then you might go to four. You could do it four, three, two, one. You could do it whichever order you want to. Okay, so um, I'm going to count us in. And I'm not going to put the metronome on, so we're just going to have to see if we can feel that sort of internal sense of pulse from my introduction. Okay, so it goes, boom, chick, chick, off I go. that was four it's hard isn't it I, I was trying to I forgot to say change should we try it again okay this time you can do a different pattern okay are we ready I'll try and get my pot right this time boom chick chick off I go change There we go. That was definitely 16 bars that time. Hopefully you finished at the same time as I did. Right, so we've done it clapping. That should be the easy bit. Now we're going to put it onto our instruments. So I know I'm doing this on the violin, but the same um, bow division ideas apply um, with cellos um, as well and violas. Um, so, with the first one's pretty easy in terms of bow division, I would say probably start around your balance point. Make sure that your bow hold is nice and loose, you've got a bent thumb, the pinky's on top. Um, cellos, adjust your um, bow hold as your teacher has told you to, but at the balance point, remember, it's the point where the bow balances. If we hold it here. And then it should feel lightest in your hand, okay? Um, now, with a three beat pattern, Ta 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 seems pretty pretty easy, but remember we've got this strong beat. So the first time through it will be down, up, down. So the strong beat comes on our down bow, which feels pretty instinctive and intuitive. But the second time it comes through, the bowing will be the other way round. Up, oh, get the right. Up, down, up. So we have to feel that flow of the boom chick chick, boom chick chick, boom down and up and down okay so that sort of flow to it so it goes off i go i'm exaggerating but you get the idea all right um we might take it a little bit slower actually when we're bowing um the next one ta ti ti ta Go to the balance point, pull down, ta, and then the quavers will be where I like to call the singing point. T, T, smaller bows, ta, get back to where you started. You might want to come sort of to where the banding is to give it a little more edge, okay? Um, but the, the quavers are always going to be at the top. This one's actually quite easy because it stays the same way every time you're doing it. Ta, T, T, ta, down. So you have that natural feeling of the, the strength on that first uh, beat of the bar. The next one um, um, has the same issue as the first one, that we have the strong beat. First time it comes is on a down bow, 
but next time it comes in the next bar, it's on an up bow. So we want to keep that same weighty feeling in the first beat of the bar. So we go, ta, ti, 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 ta, ti, 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 ta, ti, 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 ta, ti, ti. Now notice how my fingers are sort of playing with those quavers um, and the ti, 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 ti. Um, they're not rigid and stuck and the whole arm is having to do it. With the smaller, more subtle movements in our bow, we should be thinking about looseness in our wrists and our fingers. So, ta, ti, 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 boom, chick, chick, okay. And the last one, Again, looks pretty simple, but we need to not bulge on this last beat of the bar. So we're gonna have a slightly slower bow for our two woo. Two woo. And if I kept my bow exactly the same place in between the bridge and the fingerboard to get back to where I was, I'd have a whoosh and it would be a really sort of harsh sound on what we want to be the lightest beat of the bar. Boom, chick, chick, okay? So, um, what we've got to do to accommodate the extra speed we're going to need to get back to the to the heel of the bow or to, sort of around the, the binding, the balance point, um, we need to go over the fingerboard. I'm going to exaggerate. So we go two, ta, two, ta, two, ta. Now I'm exaggerating so that you can see. It wouldn't be that, um, that, um, that exaggerated because you get a little scuffle as you're moving the bow, but um, but but that sort of but that sort of accommodation you need to think about it. So and So um, it sort of feels like brushing. Um, it should just feel really nice and relaxed, sort of like you're dancing, yeah? Um, so no um, no sort of edgy, edgy sounds with the bow. So that's how we're gonna do each of these rhythms. If you want to stop the video and have a little practice, um, looking at where you're gonna be um, over the fingerboard just to, before we do it together, then that's fine. Now. Um, as with last time, we're going to do a 16 bar pattern. I'm going to slow the metronome down a little bit. Uh, let's think, what do we want? One, two, three, okay. Um, and I'm going to stay on the D string. You can experiment using other open strings. Um, you can and experiment using other notes. And then we're going to do it again. And the second time through, I'm gonna do some more sort of adventurous notes. I'm gonna write them up which notes I'm gonna be using. And it means that you can still stay on the on the, the D string open string parts. Any of your open strings will be fine. Um, and it will sound quite nice with what I'm doing. So I'm doing a simple part, which you can stay simple with me and copy me or you can go more adventurous and then we're going to do it again and I'm going to go more adventurous and so if you then want to stay on the simple part we'll get some harmonies going. Okay so this is the first time through I'm just going to stay on my D string and you can play um, any of the strings you want to. Remember I'm going through four of these, four of these, four of these, four of these. I'd like you to challenge yourself and start on a different rhythmic pattern. Okay um, and go through in a different order than me. Okay, so, boom. Actually, let me just move so that you can see the rhythms if I go down here. Yeah, let me move in a bit. Here we go. That should be better. Okay, let me move forwards a bit so I don't bang the, bang the whiteboard with my bow. Okay, uh, are we ready? So, boom, chick, chick, off. We go.
hopefully you began, started and ended with me. So um, I'm now going to do a more complicated version where I'm going to um, uh, pick a sort of improvised pattern um, using, we've done this in quite a pentatonic scale, okay? So the pentatonic scale I'm going to use starts on a G. So I have G, which is my Do, A, which is my Re, B, which is my Mi, then I miss out Fa, and then have So, um, mm, 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 which is a D, and then I have um, my La, which is an E. So I'm picking the first, the second, the third, the fifth, and the sixth notes of a G major scale. Um, and I'm going to um, try and keep the rhythm as steady as it was before. As I said, you can pick any of your open string notes. Uh, cellos and viola players, please avoid a C, because you'll notice there isn't a C in there. Okay, let me just close the windows because we're getting a bit of... There we go, that's, that's better. Um, uh, try, and, yeah, try and avoid a C so that we don't get a clash, okay? If you want to just stick on open strings, that's fine. If you want to start doing some top, stop notes over the top, um, okay. Are we ready? So, boom, chick, chick, off we go. <laughs> you started and finished with me um, and that gave you some ideas of some of the things we might be aiming towards when you're feeling more confident about adding lots of different notes into the rhythms that we're doing okay